Hello and welcome to another CAPS video. Uh, the, the goal of these CAPS videos is to better, better support parents and students alike throughout their proceedings with post-secondary education. My name is Vaslo and I'm a grade 10 student studying in Mississauga. Today we will be talking about the University of Toronto and the Neuro, Psych, Neuro and Psych program. We've invited a third year student to tell us more about it. Today with us we have Lucia. So let's get straight into some questions. First and foremost, please introduce yourself. Uh, hey, so like Vasa said, my name is Lucia. Uh, I'm from Markham and I am a third year student at U of T. Uh, I go to the Scarborough campus. I'm a full-time neuroscience psychology student um, and I am normally a commuter, not in COVID. I drive about 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so our first question is, how is the neuro or psych program at the University of Toronto, personally? I really love it. Um, I went into university not really knowing what I was looking for, but I liked how many options there were for me to take in my first year. Um, I know this upcoming semester I'm doing a course that specifically focuses on drugs in the brain, which is really cool. Um, last semester, I took a course that was on the neuroscience of attention, and when I was in high school, I didn't even realize that that was going to be a thing that I could look at, so I, I love it. Uh, we're, so there were a lot of options at the University of Toronto? Yeah, tons. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I think there are probably fewer options at U of T Scarborough than there would be at the downtown campus, um, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. I've never felt like there was a course that I wanted to take that I couldn't take. Like I've always yeah. felt like there was plenty for me. Uh, perfect. So next, what do you think is the social aspect around the Scarborough campus? Was it easy to integrate yourself into the campus environment and make friends? Um, so I'm going to be honest, U of T Scarborough is a campus of commuters. Like I think a lot of people choose it because it's easier to get to than uh, U of T St. George. So I will say that I have not made a ton of friends. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. Um, the friends I have made, I'm really close with, um, but definitely don't choose U of T Scarborough if you're looking for like a party school. Um, not a lot of parties. Um, I will say that in my first year, I did try and go out to a bunch of clubs and stuff like that. Um, they do have a pretty robust club council system. So if that is what you're into in high school, I definitely recommend it. Definitely think you'll be able to find something for you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't have friends. People have friends. <laughs> I, think I'm just a, I think I'm just a little bit of an introvert or something. Yeah. Hopefully the students watching this video aren't just going to university for parties. Uh, no, no. UT Scarborough is yeah. not the party school. Hmm. About more on that social aspect, uh, I think the major question is why did you choose the University of Toronto over all the other universities? Um, so I, okay, this is going to sound really bad. When I was in high school, I was in the AP program. So like, prestige and the name was something that was really, really important to me. So I applied to all of the big schools. Uh, I did not get into Western, which is where I really desperately wanted to go. So what really made me pick U of T over the other places I got in was honestly the closeness to home for me. Um, I, like I said, I drive to school uh, every day when we're not in COVID um, and that saves me so much money. Like, Oh my gosh, trying to get downtown, either commuting downtown or living downtown, absolutely crazy. Um, rent and on top of tuition, I remember for U of T Scarborough was going to be like an extra $15,000. And it is just a lot cheaper for me to um, just commute every day. And like I said, it's 30 minutes, so it's really not that bad. Um, the other reason why I picked specifically the Scarborough campus, and I want to touch on this because I think it might be important, is because um, U of T has a reputation for having a little bit of a competition culture. Um, mm -hmm. And I have friends that have gone to uh, U of T St. George, and it's definitely real, definitely exists. Um, so when I was making my final decision, I knew that 
I didn't really want to be part of that competition culture. Um, so I can say that having gone, gone to Scarborough, having visited the campus, um, it's definitely a lot more relaxed here. Um, and at the end of the four years, you still get U of T on the degree. So <laughs> it just made more sense for me personally. Do you think that the Scarborough campus has kind of a homely vibe to it? Yeah, definitely small. Um, it's small, it's cozy. Um, I don't know if any uh, anybody watching this interview has ever been to the U of T Scarborough campus. A lot of it's underground, um, which is I think is pretty neat. Um, so it's lots of tunnels underground, um, but they also have lots of great places for you to be able to set up and study for long periods of time. And it, it's all close and cozy and it makes it nice because I uh, U of T only gives you 10 minutes between classes. Um, and getting from one end of campus to the other end of campus is very difficult uh, in those 10 minutes. So I cannot imagine going to somewhere bigger and only having 10 minutes. Uh, one of my friends that lives downtown said that sometimes you'd have to bike uh, and you know, you just hope you hit the lights or else you're gonna be late to class. <laughs> so I like yeah. that it's small. So I guess time management skills are pretty important for the University of Toronto. Yes. Uh, I think they're important everywhere though. Yeah. Um, so how was the application process and supplementary essays? Um, my application process, you'll have to forgive me, it was a little while ago now. Um, mm -hmm. I remember it pre being pretty basic through OUAC, um, which they walked me through how to do at my high school. Um, for supplementary applications, again, I don't know if it's any different now, but I had three to four supplementary prompts. Um, they wanted them to be under 250 words each, so they weren't really essays per se. Um, I remember them being recommended, not required by any means. So, you know, like if you feel mm. like your application is strong without them, then they're not a must. Um, I was super stressed out, so I did all of the, uh, I did all of them. Oh, no, I was so worried. Did you, do you think that the prompts were, or did you think that the prompts were kind of fun? They were definitely not what I was expecting. Um, mm -hmm. I had one I actually remember distinctly. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Canada's Wonderland, but um, it was a photo of, oh my gosh, what's that ride called? Wind Seeker, where it's like the tall one and it spins around. Wind Seeker. And it, it was just like, you know, in, in 250 words or less, describe what you think of when you see this photo. And I was like, I have no idea. I was like, what type of question is this? So it was definitely more like abstract things like that. And I kind of like mm -hmm. that just because, you know, it, it gave me a chance to really show the school more of who I was rather than just what my stats were. It's, it's important to show your creative side, especially during applications. So that's, that's nice to hear. Uh, are there any extracurriculars that were required or um, recommended? I don't think that there were any that were required or recommended. I know some of the other schools I applied to um, were pretty serious about like the breakdown where they were like, list the music extracurricular you have or list the athletic extracurricular you had. And I was like, I, I don't have music or athletics. I was, you know, felt a little bit overwhelming. Um, I can say that I did get into U of T downtown. Um, I did also get into Scarborough, obviously, because that's where I go. Mm. Um, and I didn't have amazing extracurriculars. So I highly recommend applying even if you feel like you don't have great extracurriculars. Um, I have a job, so I work. That was one of my extracurriculars, mm. I guess. And um, my other volunteer experience was mostly short term. Like I never really held like a long term volunteer position. Um, mm. But yeah, I think it was okay. So. So you don't think that these, your extracurriculars gave you any type of advantage? It was just kind of set straight? Mm, I don't think so. Um, I can also say though that I know, uh, my while my program is neuroscience and psychology, it's under like the life science umbrella. I don't think that is like the most competitive program. Uh, like, I don't know, I think it is kind of difficult to get into, but it's not like engineering or computer science or anything like that. Um, I think extracurriculars are really important for those more competitive fields. Next question is, how is the neuroscience or, or psychology course load or workload? So I'm going to start, 
ideas from the beginning. Uh, I'm taking five courses, which is the standard course load under U of T. What's mm -hmm. important to know is that uh, three courses is still considered full time. So you can take three, four or five courses and still get your like full amount of OSAP because I know financial assistance is important for some people. I'm taking five courses right now, getting ready for next semester. I have 15 hours of class per week. I work for 10 hours a week and I volunteer for five hours a week. Um, so, and that's just like in class lecture time. This is going to sound really bad, but uh, <laughs> I spend pretty much all of my time studying, but that's okay because no parties are happening. Uh, nothing like that. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, so you have a very busy schedule. As we hear. Can the weekly total of these programs be a little bit stressful? I don't, I don't know. I think it can be stressful and I don't want to scare anybody off. I think a lot of that is just university. Like university is a big change from high school. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of feel like you kind of get used to it. Um, and I have found that most professors actually want to see you succeed. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, um, but they do not want to trick you. They don't want to trip you up. So I have one professor who this semester, we have like a weekly quiz. Um, and our weekly quiz is worth like 0.1% of our grade or something like that. Um, and she just has these quizzes so that she wants to make sure you're staying on top of the stuff. So mm -hmm. it's just an easy way for her to say like, hey, you know, you can skip this quiz if you want. It's not really going to mess things up for you. But I really encourage you to watch the lectures every week. So I don't mm. know. It's stressful. But like I said, you, you get used to it. Yeah. Uh, so for students that want to be a little bit more involved, what are some clubs and opportunities they might have access to at the University of Toronto? Um, so we have a really cool um, organization that I actually love. I'm not part of it. I wish I was part of it. Uh, you know, maybe I'll go apply once I'm done recording this interview. Um, but it's like an on-campus, I don't want to say first aid club, because it's so much more than that. It's like volunteer emergency services, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. in my first year, they... Um, you know, asked who wanted to join. It was cool. Uh, if you signed up for the club, they gave you all the materials you needed to take your first aid, your CPR, your everything. And now these people who I started first year with, well, again, prior to COVID, they are like on campus first responders, which I think is really cool. So, you know, if you slip and you cut your knee, they're kind of like the first aid services that you go to. And I think it's really cool. I believe they're open like almost all day. They might even have an overnight shift for people on residence. Um, and I just think that's a fantastic way for people to get hands-on volunteer experience with that type of first response thing. And then, okay, I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> so um, <laughs> my favorite club that I'm a part of and I will recommend to everybody is the board game club. <laughs> Uh, when I was in my first year, I figured it would be a good relaxing way to meet new people. When I was in my first year, I was stressed out all the time. I wasn't really interested in joining a club where it would just stress me out as much as my schoolwork. So I was like, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm going to join something that is nice and easy and relaxing. Um, and honestly, I was right. Uh, so that's my uh, one favorite club. Pre-COVID, we would, you know, play board games. Now during COVID, we are playing board games online. So just because, you know, we're online doesn't mean that clubs and opportunities stop happening. One more, I'm going to keep going. I'm so sorry. Um, it's okay. One more that I'm really passionate about and I really enjoy um, is HOSA, um, which is H-O-S-A. You might have heard of it based on your high school, because um, I know my high school had like a high school chapter, but I don't know what it actually stands for, but I know it's like future medical professionals. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty much a organization that runs across Canada and runs across the U.S. You sign up to compete in different categories, which is cool. And then at the end of the school year, you have like a school level competition where you invite local universities. And then at the end of the year, you also have like a Canada wide competition, um, which is super stressful. And then if you do well in that one, you go on to like the international competition. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think last year was in Florida? Um, there's so many different options. I did Hosa Bowl, which is kind of like trivia, 
Like it's, you buzz in and everything. Cause I, again, wanted to do something fun. I know there's a debate team though. So it's a really great for people that are interested in healthcare and looking for a fun extracurricular that relates to that. Yeah. As someone who's personally in HOSA right now, I definitely recommend it too. It's, it's a great club. It's one of my top favorites. What about your co-op and internship placements? Would you have to find them yourself? Um, so I am personally not part of the co-op program, so I can't really speak to that, unfortunately. Mm. I know U of T Scarborough does have a co-op program. I know you need to apply to it separately. Like if you're in high school and you're applying to the school, you might like click the box that says apply to co-op. You aren't actually in co-op until second year. I can't really speak to how that works. All U of T students have access to like a cool job board, which contains different types of positions depending on what you're looking for. I'm not sure, like I said, I go to U of T, so I don't know what other schools have, but I like it since it gives me an easy place to start job hunting and I can always explore and conduct further research on these companies before I apply to them. So I really like that. I can mm. sort it by what I'm looking for. So I know personally right now I'm not looking for a full-time job, so I can just filter those out and look for part-time jobs, look for summer jobs. And I really like it as well because it kind of does a little bit of screening for you. So you know, at least if the job is on the job board, then it's legitimate. Yeah, I really appreciate that. The other cool thing that U of T does, and I'm not sure other schools do this, which is why I wanna mention this, because I think it's really cool. U of T has what's called a co-curricular record in which participation in on-campus events can be recorded. So if you attend a workshop on workplace professionalism, that can go right down in your record, it gets signed off on. So that way it's an official record of like your personal growth and your experience. And I think that's really neat because it's easy to say, oh yeah, I attended X, Y, Z, here's how I've grown during the past year. But it's another thing entirely, I think to have it written down, signed off on, like here mm -hmm. is something that people know I did and I can prove I did. That's, that's really interesting that there's a formal type of effect to it. That's, that's really cool. Uh, as our last kind of fun question, what's something that surprised you about the University of Toronto's Scarborough campus or the neuroscience and psychology program? I was, when I was in my first year, I was very intimidated by the sizes of the classes. Um, so I can personally say that I was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was to form connections with professors and TAs. Like I said before, these people really want to help you. They want to see you succeed. I was like, why in this class of 300 people is my professor going to remember my name? It was introduction to per uh, perception. Mm -hmm. I really liked the course. I really loved the professor. And so I went to his office hours and I told him that, you know, like, would you have any extra opportunities for students? It didn't work out that time, but mm -hmm. it was interesting because like I said, in this class of 300 students, this professor didn't need to remember me, but he did. And like I said, that surprised me because I think it's very intimidating sometimes. But if you make the effort, professors will recognize you. People will know you. That's, that's so cool that you got to make actual inter interactions and relationships with your professors. That's amazing. Amazing to hear. But that's all the questions we have today. Thank you so much, Lucia, for sharing your experiences. If you have any questions, feel free to contact any of our student ambassadors through the Instagram or comment down below. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in our next CAPS video or interview.